Hello, my name is Kevin. From time to time, the following question is asked in the electrical engineering uh, industry, and this relates to specifically which direction is considered to be acceptable. In other words, there's a normal direction, and this by nature and uh, uh, configuration of circuit breakers is from the top uh, as an input and then bottom as an out. And uh, the question can be uh, posed, well, could I have the input at the bottom of the circuit breaker or the lower side of the circuit breaker and go out on the top? And the reasoning behind this is obviously um, when people are faced with a number of situations, uh, one of those could very easily be that uh, in retrofitting, the cables do not go around to where they were with the, the previous range. And uh, people then tend to want to take a shortcut and not extend the cables or reroute them, which would probably take some energy and time, and just connect it the wrong way. This, of course, is not really uh, a, an engineering function. This is just trying to take a shortcut and it's probably frowned upon. But there are industries which uh, do this um, considerably, considerably uh, in, the, in their specifically realm of the electrical side. And there I'm thinking of uh, municipalities which on a street cubicle tend to come in the bottom and go out on the top. And they've done it for many years. Uh, they don't really follow maybe a manufacturer specification and they've done it for so long that almost is the norm. Of course, most of their technicians and, and qualified staff understand what they're doing in a municipal type box under that in environment. And uh, they're anticipating that. So some of the problem and some of the risks involved is that if you deviate from the standard, how will the next person approaching that board uh, view it, um, especially from a safety perspective? But let's have a look firstly at what we mean. Um, and here I'm gonna just pop up a picture of a circuit breaker. Let's get this on the screen here. Um, and we're looking at something like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and here is a circuit breaker and it's quite deftly marked line and load. Um, it's engraved into the plastic and so therefore that manufacturer has deemed the line and the load prescribed. Um, and you may find some circuit breakers uh, that don't have that type of uh, marking on at all. So let's have a look from a manufacturing perspective and see what that really means. So we know a circuit breaker um, has to qualify itself by doing either self tests or third party tests. And some of those tests relate to performance uh, indicators and they were thinking of short circuit KA ratings, et cetera, insulation levels and, and the like. So uh, if you run a, 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 a specific range of tests, so this could be SANS type tests, IC tests, VDE tests, uh, UL type tests, or wherever you are in the world, they will have a regimen of tests that a circuit breaker has to pass. If we take that and we pass the breaker and we test it line on top, load underneath, um, that's how it's qualified. And it would have to be assembled into society like that. However, many manufacturers, because this reverse feeding is, is not rocket scientists, and it is a, uh, a concern right around the planet. What the guys do then is that they test, um, let's say in both directions when they do their short circuit capacity. And obviously what they're hoping for when they do that is that the circuit breaker does not degrade. By degrade, I mean it has a lower test value achievable in the reverse pattern. Otherwise, uh, they may, well, they'd have to mark it such, you know, the 50K this way, 25K that way, um, making life a little bit more difficult out there. And so the standard is generally to take a, a breaker and qualify it in both directions at the same level. 
um, most times they would pass, I would think, from my background in circuit breakers. Um, and they would traditionally have that approach uh, when they do a breaker. When they do that and get the qualification, they get it in both directions, obviously. They are not required to put line or load as an indicator on the circuit breaker. So the first thing to look at any circuit breaker, is it marked? Uh, no, then you could probably test it for both directions uh, and you could you could make that assumption straight away. The alternative is that if it is marked line and load, it really means that why would the manufacturer do that? Or he hasn't tested it in that direction. Now, as I said, most of the modern type of breakers, modern high-tech breakers have been tested both directions. Uh, if you go back historically, older models out there may not have been done like that. Um, if they haven't been done, they can't claim it. Uh, they can't uh, use that uh, condition and it might just be too line and loaded. It's not really a problem if you're doing it with your first certification testing. There's no real uh, added cost there, but it would be a cost if you had to add it later. And that's probably the limiting factor uh, in what some circuit breakers that have been qualified years ago not to that standard. They don't particularly want to go back for a rather rareish event in any, in any case to reverse feed. So that's the standard that is there. Um, what we need to also understand is that there are qualifications that are, that are breakers have been tested in both directions because it makes some sense. And as our discussion is really on low voltage up to 1000 volt type circuit breakers, many of these are going to be fitted into panels inside uh, workshops, or in main boards, in uh, substations, etc. And it, it might be that a circuit breaker panel has uh, buzz bars across the top or the back in the middle or at the bottom. And if they're on the top and the cables enter at the bottom, um, it makes some sense to use on your main feeder type breaker a reverse feeder operation. So coming up from floor level and going out into the top, into the buzz bars, and then having those buzz bars feed down in the traditional sense to all the other breakers. So quite often the main breaker is the one that's there. So if we have a look at that and it's test uh, positive to do it like that, there's no reason to do that. Um, of course, safety comes into a lot of this. So if you were to go to that panel board and to go and do some work, uh, it must be patently obvious when you approach that breaker that it has a reverse feed uh, operation and it's marked in such a fashion. Now, typically, your buzz bar could be covered with uh, plexiglass, clear glass, lots of signage on there to indicate feed in this side, et cetera, et cetera. Because the last thing you really want is that a guy turns off a circuit breaker and without testing, and hence the reason you always should be testing, um, you, you grab live buzz bars believing they've just been switched off. That is fundamental to the problem. Small panel boards, that's almost impossible on a, say, a home level type panel to have circuit breakers fed in both directions, some load, some, some not, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. And so you, you've got to keep the standard approach right on there. But on large industrial panel boards, um, it does also make some sense to go the reverse route. So that's kind of the um, background to the discussion today. Um, it's not something that's done 100% by everybody. Uh, certainly, if you go and have a look at some parts of the world, the circuit breakers are lying on their side, so to speak, and they have vertical uh, buzz bars, so vertical buzz bars fed left and right into the breakers, both on a home and on some uh, light industrial type use. A lot of that in the United States and uh, also in Australia, I'm aware of. Um, and so line and load is configured as the top of the breaker to the line side, load side. And even those sort of buzz bars in that configuration are generally very, very well uh, marked in that, you know, it's patently obvious when you go in there that what you're looking at. So fundamentally, yes, you can approach this thing of reverse feeding in a specific light. Um, Kind of, if you're going to use that approach, then make sure that all the uh, safety aspects would have been covered with that. And it's uh, the next person arriving there. Um, doesn't get confused 
um, and any safety is not uh, impeded by that. Certainly, you don't just change it and leave it and go away and uh, something could happen in the future. You, you know, think of our fellow chappies who arrive at a board, possibly under duress of a, of a fault or a condition where there is no power or there's something going on. So he's already thinking uh, laterally into some other avenue and uh, does not get caught up in sort of an, an unsafe uh, condition. So the legislation makes account that whoever uses this is marked in such a way that it's, that it's you know, it's, it's, it's above board and it's all legally done. Small boards, as I said, absolutely no chance. And no home board should be fed in such a way that you've got a mix of this approach in there. If you have got a, a, a sort of a board that's done like that, would have to have very strong knowledge uh, given to the next guy by, 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 I don't know, some sort of uh, markings or whatever on there. Um, there's so many boards that are done the opposite that, they, it, you know, it's an extreme thing to find a board these days that it's reverse fed. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things which will pop up from time to time. As I said, some industries, specifically the Munich type approach, have been using this for many years, regardless of whether the breaker actually passed or failed. Or even they didn't even take cognizance or they just used it in that fashion. It just made more sense from their wiring type of cable sizing, et cetera, um, approach. But they're not generally from that. It's normally a single feed type breaker. So it's kind of obvious what's going on there. And especially if you have to then test. I mean, let's face it, no work should be done without positive testing. And in many instances, uh, low voltage side really has um, earthing as a protection applied on open buzz bar, but nothing would prevent the individual if everything is tested dead to have um, some form of short circuit provided on the buzz bars specifically, and that I have seen on many, many large installations on the low voltage side, which have uh, not automatic, but by choice, once you've tested dead that you apply that, so nothing can happen thereafter if you're working. Uh, so I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, the main thing is on a circuit breaker that's marked or not marked or indicated. Uh, once you know the manufacturer, you can also confer with them whether some breakers. So, most modern breakers would probably pass the muster both directions, as we said. Some of the older historical stuff may not, and it could be for two reasons there. One, it has not been tested, and two, it should not be used because it has been tested and does not comply in some other way. So I hope that helps a little bit. Goodbye.